Hi, my name is Mike Gold, and in this video we will be talking about the BeagleBone Black and how to use it. With the introduction of open source microcontroller boards, the world is about to change. Never has the world been so open to invention as now. With boards such as the Arduino and Raspberry Pi, it is very easy to start creating your own hardware automation circuits and robotic prototypes for a cost of under $100. Because this new generation of hardware is easy to connect to the internet, the world of possibility is endless. Creators have often dubbed this new age the Internet of Things, a world where users can control hardware to do their bidding from long distances and have this hardware communicate with each other to produce some fascinating results. In the video to follow, I will be talking about a board that makes it dead simple to create these inventions using nothing more than a few parts, a Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection, and your PC. The board is the BeagleBone Black. Once you enter the Internet of Things, there is no limit to what you can come up with. So what exactly are we going to be doing in this video? First, we're going to show you how to install the USB to network driver you'll need to talk to the BeagleBone through the USB connection from your PC. Then we'll show you how to connect to the BeagleBone through your web browser. We'll show you how to log into the Linux operating system on the BeagleBone board using a utility called PuTTY. Finally, we'll install some Python libraries and show you how to blink an LED connected to the BeagleBone using a Python script. So what is a BeagleBone Blackboard? The BeagleBone Blackboard is a tiny computer that fits in the palm of your hand. It is equipped with a USB port, an Ethernet port to connect online, a micro SD slot for persistent storage, and a connection for HDMI video. The BeagleBone ships with Angstrom Linux but is capable of running different operating systems such as the Android or the Ubuntu operating system. In our demonstration, we will be using the already available Angstrom Linux. So how do I get a hold of a BeagleBoard or a BeagleBone Blackboard? Well, you can purchase the BeagleBone board from multiple distributors, Makershed, Jameco, Mouser, DigiKey, Adafruit, to name a few. Uh, I bought mine from Makershed for uh, $99 but I bought the kit which includes wires, some digital components that you can use for this video as well as cable for the BeagleBone Black. If you just buy the board it'll run you around $45. Once you've purchased the BeagleBone Black you should be able to hook a USB 2.0 cable to the board and the other end to your computer. Once you do that a new drive should pop up in your Windows Explorer. might take a few minutes or a few seconds. There it goes. Now we should be able to view the files in that folder. One of the files is called start.htm. We can open that file in our browser. I prefer to open in Chrome. And that'll take us to the BeagleBone start page. The start page contains links to the USB to network drivers on the board. These drivers allow you to log into BeagleBone through an SSH client or through your web browser. If you have a 64-bit system, you'll want to install the 64-bit drivers for USB. When you install these drivers, you might get some messages saying, Windows driver certification error. Simply, simply click ignore and install. I believe I needed to click the ignore about three times until it installed, but eventually it did install. You can also get the USB drivers from the BeagleBoard.org site directly. I recommend installing them from the website to ensure you have the most up-to-date drivers. Here we click the Getting Started button and click Step 2 as we did on the F drive on the board. And here's the 64-bit installer. Since the BeagleBone is a web server, you can connect to it through the browser and even manipulate it through the browser. If we go to step three here, it'll provide us a link in which we connect, can connect directly to the BeagleBone board. So here we've been taken to address 192.168.7.2, which is the BeagleBoard address. And here we get a message that the board is connected. If we had any issues or problems we probably would not see this message but now we are connected and we can navigate to what's called the Cloud9 IDE and the Cloud9 IDE allows us to edit 
a language called BoneScript. BoneScript is a JavaScript variant that lets you talk to the hardware on the BeagleBone. There's a lot of documentation you can read through here. But to get to the Cloud9 ID, I'm going to click on this link. And that basically takes us to port 3000, which is the Cloud9 IDE editor. And it is a full integrated development environment you can run. You can even debug and set breakpoints. And it also provides you with several examples that you can step through and actually control the hardware on the BeagleBone. Here is the equivalent JavaScript, or BoneScript I should say, for the Python script we're about to write. The BoneScript is actually fairly easy to use to blink an LED. Here we set the LED pin, PA12, to output. Then we set the state of the output to low, and we write that out to the BeagleBone. Finally, we call a JavaScript command called setInterval that will toggle the state or call the toggle command every thousand milliseconds or one second. The function toggle down here will look at the state and if it's low it'll turn it high. If it's high it will turn it low. So every second toggle will be entered and it will flip the state of the output pin of PA12. The way it does that is it will call digital write on the pin and change it to the toggled state. Here is the circuit that the bone script will drive to blink the LED. PA12 is a header port on the BeagleBone board. PA12 is hooked to a resistor, a 100 ohm resistor, and then to the anode of the LED. The cathode is hooked to ground. When PA12 is driven high by setting the output pin to high, it will light the LED because the resistor will pull up the voltage 3.3 volts and the LED will have current flowing through it. When PA12 is driven low when it's toggled, the anode will be low and no current will pass through the LED. The LED will be off. In order to start programming in Python, we're going to need to install a utility called PuTTY. You can download PuTTY at http www.putty.org. It's a free utility and when you download it, you're actually downloading the executable, so there's no installation. I recommend just putting PuTTY in a directory you call PuTTY on your C drive and add it to your path. Once you run PuTTY, I'll do that right now, it may put up a dialog saying that the publisher is not verified, but run it anyway. And that'll bring up the PuTTY settings. We already have a BeagleBone setting set up, so I'm going to load that so you can see. And you want to add the host name 192.168.72, which you might recognize from the previous slide. It'll automatically uh, be set to ports 22, and you'll want it set for SSH. Once you do that, hit the Open button, and now you should be able to log in to the BeagleBone. The login username is root. There is no password, so just hit enter. And now we're logged into the BeagleBone Black. In order to talk to the BeagleBone through Python, we need to install the Adafruit Python library. Before we can do this, we need to install the pip installer on our BeagleBone board. The pip installer is what Adafruit uses to install its packages. The following command can install pip. Before running any of the commands which will go out and fetch the installation over the internet, make sure that the BeagleBone is plugged into an active Ethernet connection through its Ethernet port. We'll hit return here, and this will start the package installation of PIP. We've already got it installed, so it just lets us know that everything is up to date. It's finally finished, and now we should be able to install the Adafruit library through the pip install command.
that was fast because we have it installed but if you install it for the first time you'll see quite a lot more text on your screen. Now we're ready to start programming in Python using the Adafruit library. The first thing we're going to do is open a new file called blinkme using the nano editor. The py extension indicates it's going to be a Python file. We'll put an indicator showing that it's a Python script. Now we're going to import the libraries we need to generate or to blink the LED on the board. The first one we're going to import is the time library. We're going to use that to pause between keeping the pin high and also pause when keeping the pin low. We're also going to import Adafruit. specifically the general purpose I.O. library so we can exercise the pin on the board. Now we have everything we need to blink the LED. The first step is to set pin PA12 as an output pin. We can call it by name and tell the BeagleBone board that it's going to be an output pin. Now we want to exercise the LED in its on and off state. We'll just create an infinite loop using the while statement. All this is true, which is forever. We're going to output to P812 a high signal, high being 3.3 .3 volts. So that'll tell pin P812 to go high and now we want to keep it high for one second. That will keep the LED on for one second. After one second we want to send it low. So we want to send the same pin PA12 to a low state. We'll turn it off. Then we want to keep it low for one second. After it finishes with this statement, it will go back to the top of the while loop and repeat the steps. It will send P812 high for one second and then P812 low for one second. And it will do this forever until we stop the program. We can save the program by hitting Control X in Nano. First, we're going to Control O to write it out, and then Control X. And now to run it, we simply hit Python. And that should cause your LED to blink on and off. By hitting Control C, I've stopped the program and the LED should have shut off. I can turn blinkb.py into an executable by doing a Unix command called chmod. Plus X tells it to be an executable. And now I can just run blink me by typing blink me in the current directory with a dot slash and that should blink the LED as well. Once again here's the BeagleBone circuit that the Python script is controlling. It's the same circuit we used for the bone script we looked at previously. So what have we learned in this video? We learned what the BeagleBone is and where we can get a hold of one. We learned how to install the USB to network driver for the BeagleBone and how to connect to it through the browser. We learned how to run the Cloud9 integrated development environment installed on the BeagleBone and walk through a bone script file to blink an LED. We learned how to open a putty window and SSH into the BeagleBone Linux command line. And finally, we created a Python script to exercise a pin on the BeagleBone to blink an LED circuit. I hope this video proves useful to you in getting started with the BeagleBone. In the videos to follow, we are going to create some cool stuff that hooks the BeagleBone to the online world. You can find out more about the BeagleBone Black from the BeagleBoard.org site. Also, I recommend that you take a look at Matt Richardson's book, Getting Started with the BeagleBone, as much of the inspiration for this video has come from the book. The book also ships with the Makershed dev kit. Anyway, I'm Mike Gold, and thank you for listening to my video on the BeagleBone Black.